It's clear tonight, so it's time for another Deep Sky Challenge. In this Deep Sky Challenge, unlike all of the previous ones where you needed a large telescope, you do not need a large telescope. In fact, a small telescope is better. However, you must go to a dark sky site to see this one, and you must use a UHC filter. Hello and welcome to the program Sula's Big Adventures with me, Sula. This episode is Deep Sky Challenge number five, NGC 7000, also known as the North American Nebula, a very large emission nebula in Cygnus the Swan and close to the brightest star in Cygnus, Deneb. It's 2200 light years away and it's magnitude four, but don't let that fool you because it has low surface brightness and it's hard to see. That's why you have to go to a dark sky site to see it. And it's very large. It was seen in October 1786 by famous astronomer William Herschel who said it looked like faint milky nebulosity and it was entered into the new general catalog or NGC as number 7000 where it was described as a faint most extremely large diffuse nebulosity. <laughs> this nebula is large. It's 10 times larger than the full moon and you need a three degree field of view to see the whole thing. That's why a small telescope is better. But because of the low surface brightness, you have to go to a dark sky site to see it and use a UHC filter. The nebula is close to another nebula, IC 5070, which is known as the Pelican Nebula. They are separated by a dark band that's a dark nebula. And this was cataloged by famous American astronomer Beverly Lenz in her catalog of dark nebulae in 1962 as Lynn 935. And by the way, Beverly Lenz passed away on October 5th, 2024 in Portland, Oregon. And I would like to dedicate this episode to her. She was a pioneer American astronomer. After she got her undergraduate degree, she wanted to be an astronomer. And so she applied to the astronomy school at the University of Chicago. She was initially accepted, but once they found out she was a woman, they withdrew her acceptance. And so instead, she applied to and was accepted at the University of California, Berkeley, where she graduated and got a PhD in astronomy. So I dedicate this episode to Beverly Lenz, rest in peace. Okay, so we're going to use a number of telescopes that I've gotten out tonight to look at it. And we'll start with the largest one because this one, as I said, is easier in a small telescope. So let's go over to Artemis, my 12 inch Schmidt Cassegrain telescope. And I'll put my widest eyepiece in and a UHC filter and I'll try to see it. I'm gonna turn off this light and dark adapt my eyes first because that's very important. Dark adapt your eyes for 30 minutes and let your telescope cool down and uh, to find the nebula is very easy. Just look for Deneb, the tail of the swan, and the brightest star in Cygnus. Okay, here's Cygnus, or part of it. That bright star is Deneb, the brightest star in Cygnus. And if you don't know how to find Cygnus, it's also known as the Northern Cross, and Deneb makes up one of the stars of the Summer Triangle, which can still be seen in October as I film this. So this star is Deneb, and you want to start at Deneb and then move your telescope toward Cassi Cygni, a 3.7 magnitude star. And once you get about two thirds of the way from Deneb to Cassi, you'll hit the east coast of NGC 7000. And as you move toward Cassi Cygni, that'll be the other edge of this very large nebula. So start at Deneb and move towards Cassi, and here's where NGC 7000 will be. Okay, I have NGC 7000 in my 12 inch telescope. This telescope has a very long focal length of 3048 millimeters. 
just a brush up for any beginners out there. To calculate your magnification, you divide the focal length of your telescope by the focal length of your eyepiece. I started with this 36 millimeter eyepiece, so that gave me 84 times magnification. This eyepiece has a wide field of view of 72 degrees, but to get the true field of view, you divide that by the magnification. So 72 divided by 84 is uh, 80, I'm sorry, something like 84.84. So not even a degree, but the best I can do is this two inch eyepiece made by Astromania. It's 56 millimeter. It only has a 52 degree field of view. So it gives me 54 times magnification so uh, 52 divided by 54 is about 0.95, so almost a degree, but nothing close to the three degrees that NGC 7000 is. But I could see, um, you know, part of the East Coast or Gulf of Mexico, I guess, with this one. I bought a two inch UHC filter just for this eyepiece and and really help bring out the nebulosity. But again, I can only see the edge of NGC 7000. I would have to move around to try to see the dark nebula or IC 5070, but I can see it, part of it, in the 12 inch telescope. Now let's go over to a different telescope for a wider field of view. Now I'm looking at NGC 7000 through my 6 inch refractor. I'm in my observatory with a 32 millimeter eyepiece. I could put a 40 millimeter in there, but the field of view is only 43 degrees, and this one has a 50 degree field of view. So that gives me a little better than my 12 inch Schmidt Cassegrain. Still not great though. This gives me a 1.3 degrees field of view. And I have a UHC filter on here, and I can see the nebulosity. I still can just see the part of the curl. Uh, I can't see the whole thing. So it looks good. It looks really nice in here. Um, I'm going to dark adapt later after I finish looking through all the telescopes I have set up and try to make sketches in each one. So now let's go over and look through the Dobsonian. It has the same focal length of 1200, but with the Dobsonian, I can wander around because it's a manual telescope. So let's go over there and look through the Dobsonian. It's a 10 inch telescope though. Oh, wow. Oh, oh, wow. Oh, that is beautiful. Oh my goodness. I think this is the best look at the North American Nebula I've ever had. It looks fantastic. It's incredible. Wow. I'm looking with a 40 millimeter, two inch eyepiece, Celestron. I don't know what the field of view is. I, I, I'm guessing 50. So that would give me almost a degree and a half. But the nice thing about a Dobsonian is this is one time we're pushing it is a good thing because then you can s just move around and see the whole thing and the Pelican Nebula 2 and LDN 935 and it is beautiful 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 look at the North American Nebula now it's good that Cygnus has moved over a little bit because sometimes when things are at the zenith you you just it's hard to get it in a Dobsonian, but right now it's a little past the zenith, so it looks fantastic. Beautiful look at NGC 7000. It looks so good in this telescope, and also, I don't know if I mentioned this, but Cygnus is my favorite constellation. It's got so many wonderful things in it, and in addition, Inside NGC 7000, there are two star clusters, NGC 6996 and 6997, one discovered by William Herschel and one by his son, John Herschel. And they're so pretty. So that's worth looking for inside of NGC 7000. Beautiful, beautiful look at this nebula. Wow. 
Oh, wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> that is beautiful. I thought it'd be hard to top the look I had in the Dobsonium, but I can with this 90 millimeter refractor. It's unbelievably beautiful. This has a 540 millimeter focal length and I have a 36 millimeter eyepiece. So that gives me 15 times magnification, which is not much. And I think it's the lowest useful for this telescope. So that gives me a true field of view of four and a half degrees. So I can see the whole North American Nebula and the Dark Nebula and the Pelican Nebula. And it is beautiful. I didn't even put the UAC filter in yet. Beautiful. It's going to take me a while to sketch this one because I can see so much, but I'll try. Beautiful look at the North America Nebula. Okay, I've finished looking at NGC 7000 with each of the telescopes. I did have a four and a half inch I was going to get out too, but I got too much going on, so I never actually got around to setting it up, but I looked at it with all of the other telescopes. I could see it with the 12 inch telescope. I had to just look at bits at a time. Um, I couldn't see the whole thing obviously, but I could see it and it looked great, especially with the UHC filter. It looked very nice in the six inch refractor, but again, I could only see a part of it. It looked wonderful in the Dobsonian and I really enjoyed moving around manually and enjoying the whole thing and the star clusters in it and it was just fabulous. It was very nice in this little 90 millimeter refractor. I could see a four and a half degree field of view with this telescope at its lowest magnification and that was great. So I hope you can see it too. I do want to say that I'm in a rural area and I took an SQM it was 21.34 and the transparency was very good tonight, no moon, very clear evening, and that's essential. You have to go to a dark sky site to see this one. You don't need a big telescope though, so I hope you can see it too. That's it for now. I'll see y'all soon. Till then, get outside and enjoy the night sky. Dark skies forever. Sula, signing off.